Well, good morning. This is Dr. Mike Erickson, pastor at Big Bear Foursquare Church, wonderful church in Southern California, uh, USA. Welcome to those of you around the world, East Africa specifically, India, Pakistan, and uh, Asia, and all sorts of places. So I'm going to say welcome as we get into the Word of the Lord. The title of the message today is called The Ultimate Love, and we're actually going to be finishing Ephesians chapter 5 today and entering chapter 6 next week. As we go into chapter 6, the series after the book of Ephesians will be the book of Nehemiah, and I look forward to that. So let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 to 33. As you turn there, I want to say, husbands, today is your turn. Husbands, now ladies, listen to this because the responsibility of this message is laying on our shoulders today. Husbands, you are required to love your wife as much as Christ loves the church. That's impossible. That's your goal. That's really hard. How can I love my wife as much as Christ loves the church? That is your goal. For, it, the goals also start with a desire. That should be your desire to move in that direction. But if you have no desire to move in that direction, you might wind up with a lot of conviction here because God wants you to understand, first of all, that you're required to love your wife as much as Christ loves the church. And husbands, you're required to love your wife with the same actions as Christ has for the church. As I look at the church today, I see quite a few good examples of how husbands should be. But the first step in understanding uh, loving our wife as much as Christ loves the church, loving our wife in the same way that Christ loved the church, is to look at sacrificial love. Verse 25, for husbands this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And as a sacrifice, he gave up his life for her. We gave up our life for her. You know, one of the things that I find that really tears at marriages is selfishness, narcissistic behavior, self-interest, and looking for yourself first. Never works. You get two people with hard heads looking into the relationship for themselves, what they can get out of it and stuff. They never come together because self would not allow that. But husbands, when we lay down our life uh, for, for our wife, love her in that way, Christ says in verse 26 to make the church holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of the word of God's word. Gentlemen, you're also the spiritual head of your house. 
Not that you should lay down the law where it's going to do this and this and that. Maybe, maybe there's a place for that. But lead by example your devotions to Christ, your commitment to the Word of God, your commitment to prayer, your commitment to local church, your commitment to serving God. Now that example will lead your wife with you and you both can glorify God. Jesus Christ and his, and his bride, the church, that's the ultimate love in the in, uh, larger sense. Verse 27 says, Christ did this to present him, to her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any blemish. Instead, she shall be holy and without fault. What does Jesus do for the church? Forgives her, strengthens her, builds her up. What's he do? He's that he not only encourages her, but he uh, brings her along in a relationship with God like Christ does for us with the church. Now you find that this passage, marriage is interwoven with Christ and the church. And Paul does that on purpose because he wants us to see both at the same time. Concerning the bride of Christ, Guys, this is a good one. You are the bride of Christ with the ladies. We have one husband who is Christ. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. What is Paul saying? Paul saying, you know what? I'm jealous that of you with God's jealousy. There's no idols, no adding Christ to it. No doing your own thing, no, no, this. You belong to Jesus. There's no spiritually going out on him. You belong to him. And Paul says, I'm jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. Looking at the church and saying, this is, we're not divided loyalties here to our husband Christ. Because Paul says to the Corinthians, I promised you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. Belong to Jesus. You didn't just add him to your life. And if you did just add him to your life, that means you're not a Christian because God would not have that. If you're saved, you're transformed by the glorious power of God and born again. That means you belong to Him. And if you don't belong to Him, you're not saved yet. Revelation 19 verse 2. Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. As a side note, Matthew 25, 1-13 comes to mind right now. We're preparing ourselves, getting ready for the rapture to meet the Lord. We're building up our oil and and we're taking care of ourselves, getting things ready. And as a bride, we're focused on that one event. You don't have a, to do, get a lot of things done before Jesus comes. You have to be ready for when he comes. And if you're one of the five foolish brides, 
he will say, I, I never knew you. I thought I, I chose you to be my bride, but it didn't work out. You didn't prepare so I, I really didn't know you. Depart from me. You know, we're reminded of Matthew 7, 21. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, did we prophesy in your name? Did we cast out demons in your name? Did we do many miracles in your name? And say, you know what? I, I Yes, you did, but I never knew you. So, bride, keep re ready, be alert, be awake. Consider yourself a bride, get yourself focused on the Lord, you belong to Him. Let's be focused on that. We belong to Jesus. Amen. Now the husband's love for his wife. You know, when I, I look at our church body, I can look at some good examples of, of husbands doing a good job and wives can testify to that. But it, always we can improve and come to the point where we say, you know what, I need to grow in loving my wife as much as Jesus loves the church. Trish, you can pay, play that back for you, you know. <laughs> Husbands love her, what does that mean? Protect her. Be her security. Physically, spiritually. Don't let the devil get to her. He'll have to get through you first. Provide for her. Ephesians chapter 5 in the King James talks about nourishing her, cherishing her, providing for her. Again, security. How do we provide for her? Well, protection, but financially, also as a covering and leadership. When you tell your wife, you know what, I got this for you. I'll, I'll take care of that. They love to hear that. Amen? Because when you do take care of it, that provides security and protection and provides for her well. We need to cherish her. Value her. And finally, honor her. As a Proverbs 31 woman. Early in our marriage, Trisha, I would joke with Trisha and say, you're a Proverbs 31 woman. Then when we get upset, I say, you're Proverbs 29 today. <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke. <laughs> Colossians 3.19 says this, Husbands, love your wives. Highlight this, guys. And never treat them harshly. Verbal, physical, attitude. Don't be rough on your girl. Never treat them harshly. Looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. Now, this is talking about normal husbands, not narcissists who have no problem focusing on themselves. Nor is it talking about the person who hates themselves and lets themselves go and doesn't, you know, it's talking about a normal attitude, a normal frame of mind. 
as you care for yourself. You know, the average American spends six hours a day on food, preparing it, shopping for it, eating it, snacks, desserts. Six hours a day involves some type of food. We need to nourish and cherish our wives by spending time and effort and investing in them. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Why? Because we're one flesh. I really believe that, and there are exceptions to this next statement, but for the most part, men, husbands, we are the key to our marriage. I know there are exceptions to that. I know there are things that make that not true, but for the most part, the first rule is that a successful marriage start with us. And I will say a successful family to serve God with children starts with us as well. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. Everybody got that? As much of life as you put into yourself, we need to put into our wife. And then changing focus here in verse 30 says, and we are members of his body. See, Paul's interweaving this with Christ the head and we're the bride, husband and wife. So he just interweaves this into this passage. We are members of, of his body. What does that imply? I need to lay down my life for you. I need to cherish and honor you. I need to work with you. I need to love my neighbor as myself. I need to pour out my life to you as a believer. Paul outlines for us the ideal. We need to focus on, on that and, and grow in these principles because you never will perfect these principles, but we move forward in them and reminded constantly about how we can improve our relationship with our wife. Verse 31. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. That, that's the key when you become one flesh, when you actually flow as one. When husbands, you give yourself to your wife, your wife gives herself to you. you come, and after a while, it becomes like a nice soup. It becomes, it becomes one thing because both of you are giving yourselves to each other and to the Lord first. Paul says this is a great mystery, how we can be one flesh. I agree, it's a great mystery. When we start thinking alike and enjoying things alike, you know, Trish and I, we, we have mostly the opposites, or opposites. We got married on the same day though, <laughs> and we love Jesus very much though. But with every year that passes, we see together how much we are one flesh, how much we are one mind and heart. 
coming together. Paul says, but it is also an illustration, it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one as well. The wife's love for her husband, gotta love him. What's that mean? It means to appreciate who he is, to appreciate him. Men respond to appreciation maybe more than most things. To build him up. Men have a fragile ego. That's, uh, guys, you can say amen if you know that or owe me. But men have an ego and fragile. And as a man, we have pride. And in the right areas, ladies, to love him means you build him up in that way. When Trish and I, early marriage, I think it was 1995 because I remember the car. We just bought a new car. And we went to Stater Brothers. And you know, back in those days, for 20 bucks, you could buy a lot of stuff. And she, we opened up the trunk and she was bringing stuff in. And I was mad. She has, Spent a hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> on, on everything from you know toilet paper to goodies and every, everything in between. And I was mad, and she picked up and then she says, "Mike, I want to thank you for providing for us the way you do, being the husband that you are. Look all the good things that she done." She just went on like that. I said, I am so happy. Go get another $150 worth of stuff. <laughs> I felt so built up and encouraged and proud of myself in a positive way, but also blessed with my wife. Appreciate him, build him up, respect him. I'll tell you what, the first crack in the foundation of marriages start when the husband doesn't love his wife and she doesn't respect him. That disrespect is a big chopping away at the foundation of marriage. Men need appreciation, build up, respect, and finally honor. Honor. Chapter 5, verse 33 of Ephesians. So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself. Amen. We agree with that. Our prayer is that we do that. We ask God to help us apply that every day. And the wife must respect her husband. That is, word respect is a key to his heart. And when respect goes into disrespect, you find the cracks in the foundation of a happy marriage. The love of Christ for his bride, the church. I'm just going to read through this because you can see how much Jesus loves you. Romans 8.35, can any, anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Does, he mean, does it mean he loves us any less? As uh, the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered 
like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. He loves you on the good days and the bad days. He loves you when you're not lovable. He loves you when you think you are. Neither death nor life, nor neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And the way Paul writes this originally in the Greek is implying that our love for him is the same in the same vein. Our commitment to him is that all these things, none of these things, will be able to separate me from my love for him as well. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now the love of a husband for his wife, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Verse 4 and 5. At every wedding that I've done, I use this passage to speak to couples. I have done so many weddings that it would boggle your mind to hear the number, but I'm not particularly proud of that, but I am proud of the fact that God has used me in a lot of situations to give a witness in weddings. Always telling couples. One funny thing is that I did a wedding on a Friday night in about 1991-92. From this girl, this pretty little girl from Norway, and her name is Tuna, T-O-O-N-A. Tuna. And her handsome husband, husband to be came in and he says, Hi, my name is Charles. <laughs> Charlie Tuna. So I couldn't get that out of my head during the whole wedding. <laughs> Charlie Tuna, we're getting married. <laughs> Love is patient, guys. Love is always kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud. It's not rude. <coughs> we gotta be careful with what we say because we know our partner so well we can choose words that can hurt so much. Love does not demand its own way. It's not irritable, keeps no record of being wrong. I remember 30 years ago you did that to the stove. Love keeps no records of wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. For better, for worse, for rich or for poor, there are going to be adverse circumstances, there are going to be trials and tribulations. There's going to be things that we grow through, things that we fight through, things that we're delighted through, things that we enjoy. 
But in every circumstance, there must be love. Husbands, 1 Peter 3, 7. In the same way, you, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be physically weaker than you, although uh, I, for about a year, took a, a yoga class with the, the ladies from the Dunn's Church. I was one, the only guy with the 20 ladies. And I told the girls, never will I say again that a man is stronger than a woman. I mean, they ran me into the ground in that yoga, yoga class. But you get the meaning, right? But she is your equal partner, equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should. So your prayers will not be hindered. If God's not answering your prayers and you're trying to figure out what's happening, check your wife first. Check your relationship first. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your word, which is so powerful. I want to thank you for the men of God that you place under my care and give them grace to fulfill this word. I pray for all those who would hear my voice that you would strengthen the men of God worldwide to be godly husbands and stand for the truth and love their wives and children. Thank you in Jesus' name.